Sixth grade lesson 2.4 is simplifying factors. And I think this is a tool that you'll really like once you get used to it. I use it a lot in any multiplication I do with fractions. I use it every time, anytime I can use it. It's a great way to keep, as you know, multiplication numbers can get very large. And then you know you're reducing fractions after you're done. So this is a way, a tool you can use to keep the, um, the reduction on the product at a minimum or at all. So once you get the hang of this, you'll like it. Let me just show you uh, one way in the book, they talk about one way you can simplify the fraction by just reducing the product, which we've already kind of looked at. And then the another way that they talk about is that trick that we can do that helps us reduce down the fractions before we even multiply them. Okay, so the one way they're talking about is once you get an answer, you have to simplify or reduce the answer, the product, or the whatever problem we've, we've done in fraction form. We always reduce it to its simplest form. So we learned recently that with multiplication, I simply multiply my numerators and then I multiply my denominators. So I'm going to get 14 over 50. And then at this stage, I have to look at this number and reduce it to its simplest form. So I look at what number will divide evenly into both of those. And I don't spend a lot of time trying to figure out um, what's the largest number that can divide evenly into both of them. I just find the first number I can find because if it's still more reducible, I'll just find the other number instead. So um, these are both even. So I know that two divides equally into both of them. So I'm going to do that. Divide two into both of them. This is going to give me seven over 25 because it cuts both numbers in half when you divide by two. And that's as reduced as it can get. That's a prime number. So only seven can go into it and seven doesn't go into that. So that's it. That's my reduced version. So that's one way you can reduce on the other end. But they talk to us about another way. And um, I think you're going to like this. And so really what this is, before we multiply them across, is this, right? And before I take those factors and multiply them, I am going to kind of take that same way I did reduction here. But here I'm dealing with smaller numbers, this one and this one. Um, and I can go across here, right? So I'm going to look at my crosses here. Is there a number that divides evenly into both of those? Yeah, two goes into both of these. That stands out right away. That's an even number, that's an even number. So I'm just gonna take that and say two divides into two once and two divides into 10 five times. What about this other way? Anything that divides evenly into both five and seven evenly, other than one, because one's not gonna change it. But other than one, is there anything that divides into both of those evenly? No, that's prime and it doesn't go into that. So no, nothing does. All right, so once I've reduced my crosses down as low as they'll go, now I'll just multiply across like I did before. One times seven is seven. And five times five is 25. Oops, 25. And notice I got the same answer as I did here. Only I didn't have to think as with much bigger numbers. It was much smaller numbers. It It's equal either way. You're, you're fine either way. If you prefer to just multiply and then get an out of answer and then reduce it out of those big numbers, that's fine. But as you practice this, I think what you'll start to realize is it starts to sink in. It's much easier to reduce fractions when they are smaller numbers. So before multiplying, if you can do that with the smaller numbers, it just makes it easier. We'll practice a few. Okay, so remember our steps for multiplication were change everything to a fraction and they both are. And then the next step was um, to multiply straight across. Actually, I think I even put in your steps from before for your notes to cross reduce. And that's what this lesson is teaching. Let's reduce these down before we go into getting something gigantic. Five times 14 is gonna be big. Eight times 15 is gonna be even bigger. So let's see if we can knock these numbers down a little bit. So we're gonna look at these crosses, five and 15. Is there a number that divides evenly into both five and also 15 evenly, other than one? One doesn't change anything. But yeah, five does. Five goes into five once and five goes into 15 three times. So let's put that 
5 goes into 5 once, and 5 goes into 15 three times. Uh, a couple of years ago, one of my students felt like it cleared it up for them if they circled those numbers on the outside for whatever reason, and it did seem to clear it up for a couple of other students too. So now I circle them. I learn from you guys what helps you best. So we circle the, the number that it divided down to. All right, let's check our other cross. Is there something that goes into both 8 and 14 evenly? Well, they're both even, so 2 must go into them. Let's go ahead and use a 2. 2 divides into 8 four times, and 2 divides into 14 seven times. I can check again because I didn't necessarily go and find the greatest common factor. I just kind of found a factor. Um, but nothing goes into both 4 and 7, so that's as reduced as it's going to get. Now I can just go ahead and multiply straight across with these smaller factors. 1 times 7 is 7, and 4 times 3 is 12. By the way, if we hadn't cross-reduced these or simplified the factors is what they're calling it, but I always refer to it as cross-reduce. It was the crosses I reduce it. Those are the crosses I reduce it. If we hadn't, we would have multiplied and got 70 over 120. And then we would have looked at this number to see if we could reduce it. And I would have noticed, oh, that ends in a zero, that ends in a zero. And I know that 10, if you count by 10, every number that you count by ends in a zero. So 10 divides evenly into both of those. So I would have divided by 10. I would have reduced the product instead of the factors. And I would have got 7 twelfths, and I would have got the same answer. But sometimes it's not as easily seen on the reduction on these great big numbers, or you have to reduce it several times because you're not sure what the greatest common factor is. So I find it personally easier, once you get used to this, to go with that cross reduction. It just keeps things nice and simple all the way through. All right, let's try another one. This is 3 eighths times 2 ninths. Let's check those crosses to see if we can reduce anything. Right here, uh, 3 divides into 3 and 9, both. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 3 divides into 3 one time, and 3 divides into 9 three times. Let's check our other cross, the 2 and the 8. Well, they're both even numbers. 2 divides into both of them. So I'm going to do 2 into 2 one time and 2 into 8 four times. Then I just multiply across. 1 times 1 is 1. 4 times 3 is 12. My answer is 1 12. If we want to see how that would have worked out, if we'd just done it the old-fashioned way, 3 times 2 is 6. 8 times 9 is 72. And then at that point, we'd have to reduce down recognize maybe that 6 divides into both of those, or maybe you would have recognized that 2 did, and then you would have noticed again that 3 did afterwards, and you get 1 12th. You'll still get the answer, but always easier to multiply um, smaller numbers than it is larger numbers. Okay, we'll practice one more, and I do want to point out that it it's not always possible that the cross is reduced. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but I always check for them because if they do, it just makes the multiplication easier. So let's see if these work. I have a four and a 12 here, a number that divides evenly into both four and 12 on the crosses there. Um, yeah, actually four does. Four goes into four once and four goes into 12 uh, three times. What about this cross, a seven and a seven? Oh yeah, well seven goes into both of those, so that makes it super easy. Once there and once there. Uh, one times one is one, one times three is three, and you get one thirds. So what if I did this? Because maybe some of you noticed um, when we cross reduce, you're like, oh, well four and 12, well two goes into both of those. Okay, so two goes into four twice, and two goes into 12, um, six times, and let's say you did recognize the seven and seven one. Okay, so we recognize the seven and seven one. Seven goes into seven once, and seven goes into seven once. And that you didn't see that I could still reduce down my two and my six. If you noticed that, you would have gotten down to this, because two goes into both of those. But let's say you didn't. Let's say you didn't notice, oh, I could have still gone even more. Then you would have done 2 times 1 is 2, 1 times 6 is 6, 
oh, I can still reduce. That's where you notice, oh, two goes into both of those, so I'll reduce that. And you're still going to get one third. So I wanted to show you that so you know, like if I didn't reduce all the way down, if I missed the reduction to its lowest form, it's not going to hurt you to, you'll still get the right answer. It's just going to mean that you're going to do some reduction again on the product. Sometimes you still have to reduce on the product, even if you cross reduce. So those are some key points I wanted to point out to you. Practice with this. I, I believe you're going to find like I do that this is a skill that's really valuable to know. It helps you simplify things uh, as you work through huge things of math later. If you can, whatever you can simplify to make easier is great. And this is one of those things.